The new Justin Herbert contract resets the quarterback market. The so-called social media quarterback has now become the Wells Fargo quarterback. Justin Herbert just signed a deal worth $262 million with nearly $190 million fully guaranteed. The Los Angeles Chargers went all in on Herbie and solidified their franchise guy. Herbert threw for over 4,700 yards and 25 touchdowns last season, his third with the Chargers after being selected number six in the 2020 draft out of Oregon. In his first three seasons in the league, Herbert has thrown for over 14,000 yards, by far the most any player has thrown for in his first three NFL seasons. In his short time in the league, Herbert has thrown for 94 touchdown passes, which is second most only to Hall of Famer Dan Marino in that same time span. Herbert is the only player in league history to throw for at least 4,000 yards in each of his first three seasons. And Herbert is the latest quarterback this offseason to sign a huge contract extension. Philadelphia's Jalen Hurts agreed to a five-year, $255 million deal. And Baltimore's Lamar Jackson agreed to a five-year, $260 million deal. And that's in addition to what Deshaun Watson got when he started his whole thing by getting $230, $240 million guaranteed. Cincinnati's Joe Burrow is going to break the bank relatively soon, probably this week. And this thing just keeps escalating. When Jalen Hurts signed his deal, it was record-breaking. When Lamar Jackson signed his deal, it was record-breaking. And now Justin Herbert has taken it to another level. But none of that will compare to what Joe Burrow and probably Patrick Mahomes end up getting. I would expect that Joe Burrow sees something in the neighborhood of $280 million, possibly $300 million. So what does this mean for other quarterbacks? Well, first and foremost, when Patrick Mahomes gets ready to renegotiate, you're probably going to see the first $400 million quarterback in NFL history. You're probably going to see the most lucrative contract ever in sports history. And he deserves every single penny. It's scary what these quarterback salaries have become. I mean, just absolutely scary. But what does it mean for other quarterbacks? Well, as you may know, Josh Allen is in the midst of a contract he negotiated in 2021 that pays him $258 million over six years. Beyond that, currently, there are no quarterbacks even knocking on the door to enter the billion dollar boys club that has become NFL quarterbacks. The next tier of potential enrollees are Brock Purdy, Kenny Pickett, and Tua Tungabailoa. Brock Purdy and Kenny Pickett are still on rookie deals, so nothing's really going to happen with them anytime soon. And all three are going to have to have monster years this year to even be considered entry into the Billion Dollar Boys Club, especially Tua Tungabailoa. This is the end of the road for Tua. This is where he's going to either have to make it or break it. If he wants to get into that $250 million plus club, he is going to have to prove it this year. Otherwise, he's just going to be another quarterback just playing in the league. If he wants the big bag, the huge bag, he is going to have to deliver all season this year. If Tua stays on the field, he should be fine. He's surrounded by a cast of characters that should allow him to succeed way into the next level. But therein is his dilemma. You see, if Tua doesn't stay on the field for all 17 games, if Tua doesn't perform at a level up here all season long with that cast of characters on that roster with Waddle and Chosen, and of course, Tyreek Hill and Raheem and all the other track stars, A-Chain, if he doesn't perform at a level up here, he's never going to see that kind of money. With the Miami Dolphins stacked roster, the pressure to perform is going to be at 11. I think this is one of the three to five best rosters in the entire NFL. Um, I've talked about this a lot, just top to bottom. This team is so stacked. Uh, everything they did on defense, I could talk about for hours the personnel additions obviously the hiring of Vic Fangio it's defense that I thought was already pretty good at the end of last season but was in a very overly aggressive scheme that's going to change I think they are a top five unit just based on paper the offseason my question for the Dolphins I think is whether the offense um, 
and we're gonna see this week why don't they play the Chargers, which is just the most toxic matchup possible. That's perfect. Uh, what kind of changeups they come have come up with? Because this was like an unstoppable killing machine the first half of the season, then some you know grit got thrown into the gears. So I'm curious to see what McDaniel's come up with this offseason. The roster is so. And it's not just like the big names. It's guys like you can just point to. They have so many good players at every position group, not just the stars, but like guys like Zach Sealer, David Long Jr., the linebacker they picked up. I mean, Javon Holland is a star, but he's not talked about like a star. I think he's going to be seen as a star. After- There's no way. There's no possible way that Tua Tonga Bailoa can have a mediocre season with this roster. If Tua Tagovailoa wants the big money, if he wants that huge $250 million deal contract, if that's what he's looking to get, he is going to have to prove it for 17 games, put up huge numbers, and take the Miami Dolphins deep into the playoffs. That's it. That's where it is. The quarterback market has been reset. It is what it is. And if you want to enter that club, that billion dollar boys club that is the NFL quarterback market, you're going to have to prove it on the field all season long. Let everybody know you deserve entry. Talk to you soon. While it's only the first day of training camp and already the news is exploding. I can't wait to hear what Joe Burrow does. I bet you that happens in the next couple of days or so, but I'll be on it if it happens. Talk to you soon.